Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Big Bite Baits with the coach on Monday. And I got Jordan with me as usual. We're here to talk a little bit about fishing and fishing tackle and all kind of good things. But before we get to our questions and our bait of the day, Jordan, let's talk about two new visors that we have in. I think are pretty neat. So we did a hunting visor for all you guys that like to hunt. Still want to represent your tackle company. It's, it, it's a Richardson visor. It's pretty nice. Um, uh, and it's, of course, it's got a uh, big bite baits in Borders Run, but not in a bright color where it will spook anything. So definitely something you might want to look at. It's on the internet now. Mm -hmm. And then the other one's what I like to call half a hat. It's a Richardson 112 made down into a visor. It's actually kind of neat. It's a little thicker on the back than a normal visor, but it has the same exact bottom as a Richardson 112 hat does. It's just been chopped off. But we do have it in this gray color with a red fish on it, and that also is available right now online at Big Bite Bait. So two new visors for all you guys that like to wear visors. Obviously, I don't wear a visor too much. If you ever saw me on a hat, you'd know why. So, but anyway, they are there for sure. Okay, questions from last week. We got anything we let left over? Sure, yeah, <clears> we excuse got some, me. We got some good ones. All right, good. Give me a couple of them and we'll move on. So official Trent C wants to know, what is your favorite fish to catch, Coach? But that's pretty neat. Uh, so let's do it this way, Trent. Let's let's do it by north, south, and in the Gulf. Okay. That way we can have three different ways. So if I'm fishing down south, obviously I like to catch a bass. But I also like to catch that, that F1 tiger strain of bass. They seem to be pretty mean and they fight really well. Mm -hmm. And then of course, if I were to go to the north, I love to catch smallmouth. They're really fun to catch. I've always wanted to catch a muskie. I've never caught one of those, but I think that would be a fun fish to catch up north as well. Uh, and then if I'm going out in the Gulf of Mexico, it's hard to beat what I call a reef donkey. That's an amberjack. If you hadn't ever caught an amberjack, pound for pound, they'll bring you to your knees, so to speak. I mean, they're a lot of fun to catch, but you don't want to catch too many because you'll be exhausted. I mean, you'll be out of breath. Right. <laughs> but anyway, so that's, that kind of answers that question, I think, pretty good. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. How about this one from Carlson Fishing Club? Do the finesse worms float? Our finesse worms do not float, either one of ours. But we do have a little bit of, you know, some people do make a floating worm. We don't make any here at Big Bite Baits, but we do have an alternative. One of the worms I'm actually going to talk about today is a squirrel tail, and it does have a little bulbous floating tail, and you can get that in four and six inch, four and a half actually in six inch. So that's the closest thing we have here at Big Bite to a true floating worm, but uh, I'm sure some other companies do make floating worms. We just don't. All right, here's the last question, which is going to go into today's subject. Super. Fishing and Pitching wants to know, what is the correct way to put the hook in a shaky head worm? Okay, that's a pretty good question. Uh, I've got one rigged up here. I'll show you what it should look like. And it, you always want to keep that part straight after you get it rigged. And, and the raw product would be an open screw on type jig head. And you basically just take the meteor of your bait and screw it on to it's snug to the, to the ball of the jig. And then you want to inch that worm up and slide that hook in. Now, what I like to do, Jordan, I like to make the point of my hook barely be visible out of the top of the worm. That way when you set the hook, it comes on through and you get a nice hook set on that worm. So basically, a lot of guys will do what they call skin hook it, where they lay the whole flat part of the barb over in the back of the worm. But I, on a shaky head normally, I just pull the tip, the very point of the tip through enough that I can get penetration when I set the hook. So that's kind of what I would recommend or how I would rig that for sure. Okay. Okay, so I guess what we need to do now is move on to our little show today. So what I thought I might do today, you know, in the fall of the year, we've talked about fish going back in the backs of creeks and chasing shad and that type of thing. And, and that's what kind of holds true here. But on a lot of lakes, fish hang out around gravel. They hang out on rocky points. I know one time I was out in Missouri in the fall and we were catching fish on Table Rock Lake where the sand would meet the, the rocky points. So that's kind of where the fish were hanging out. So there's a lot of different lakes that fish a lot of different ways. And one thing I wanted to kind of highlight today was fishing a maybe a, a finesse bait, a shaky head type bait around those rocky points, those sandy beaches and things where fish might get on other lakes. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about that today. Now, if you're going to go out deep, obviously, I recommend to use either one of two heads. You can use our mag head or you can use our BBTW, which is a big shaky head. They're both like half and three quarter ounce. And I would recommend putting that, you know, that eight inch finesse worm on there. Uh, just to give you an idea, and that's a really good deeper water type rig that works really well. And you can also substitute the six inch finesse worm on there as well. So I'd give you two different types of finesse worms. And that's one way, basically, excuse me, that's basically one way you could attack, you know, your deeper water fish. And that's kind of how I recommend that. 
fish it with a light line. You can even fish this in deep water with a little heavier line if you'd like to, but definitely a way to attack them deeper. So as you go shallower, there's a lot of different ways to work. So what I really tried to do today was show a couple of small, really downsized rigs that you could use. So right here, I've got our fin to his head and I've got a 4.5 shaking squirrel on it. Now we make this shaking squirrel worm also in a six inch, but that seems to be something that's real effective. And here I have the round head uh, finesse of jig where we also have one that has a stand up side on it where it's flat and you could go either way. So basically I knocked the hook out of it, but kind of give you an idea of a way to do it. Also on that same rig, you could run this four and a half inch squirrel tail and you basically got the same rig. The only difference is the tail on this bait's a little more bulbous. So as a result, it's made out of floating plastic. So it'd give you a total different look. And another thing you might could run on this, and I didn't bring one on the show today, would be a coon tail. I know that Jeff Creed does that quite a bit. So that's some ways that you could downsize and make that work pretty well for you. And then if you wanted to, you could take this off, obviously. I'm gonna un untwist it here. And uh, then you can go to the little bigger, like the regular six inch finesse worm and put it on the bait. I'm not gonna take time to screw it on, I'm just gonna hold it. But you could go that rig with a six inch finesse worm like that. And that would give you another option. And I know this is real popular, especially down here in this part of the country. So, you know, that's the way. And we have that, like, we offer that in like 20 different colors. So that's another avenue for you. And then to do something just totally off the wall, <coughs> excuse me, and totally different, how about let's do the limit maker on a, on a shorty head. Mm. Now, I know that's one that's, you know, it's very similar to a Ned rig, but it's on a shorty rig type head and you've got your little limit maker, and that was another option that you might want to try in colder water conditions, especially when the fish get kind of lethargic. So that's something to think about as well. So those were some things I wanted to share today. I thought that, you know, might work really well. Now I do want to go back and do want to touch on the shaking squirrel worm and his squirrel tail are both also available in the same length as this finesse worm. You can do both of those in a six inch version as well. So you can kind of adjust the, you know, your rigs the way you'd like to adjust them. But those are some of the things that we make that I highly would recommend to do this with. And I think it'll work pretty well. Okay. All right, we got any questions coming in from anybody live today we might can, can answer possibly? Yeah, can we talk real briefly on, again, the different type of heads? Okay, I basically showed our customers and our, our followers today three types of heads that we make. I showed them the mag head, which is the big magnum head. It's got the big supercharged hook in it. It's got a little larger hook than normal. It's got like a six aught hook in it, okay? I showed them what we call a BBTW, which is a thin twist head. It's just a standard fin twist with a ball head. And then we make this same head, which I don't have one today, but we do make the same head with a stand-up side on it that's flat that allows that jig to set up on the bottom like that. So those are the three ways or the three types of jigs that I recommend that we build that'll work real good with this type of fishing. Okay, and the main difference is just gonna be hook size and Main size. difference is hook size, lead size, obviously, and then one has a flat side One's more of an anvil type head that has a big flat side on it, like you can see there. And then of course, this is the Magnum mic head. It's got the bigger, heavier head, half, three quarter ounce type head. So basically that's the differences. In them. And you know, basically on this fin twist head, they all carry the same size hook. Whereas this Magnum has a lot bigger hook in it, a lot more stronger, more powerful type hook in it. Okay, so that's maybe for more of a bait caster. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, I like to fish that on a bait caster you know, with, with heavy line and fishing just like I would a Texas rig worm or anything else, seems to do real well. Okay, so roughly what type of setup would that be on? Like, I like to use like a, a, a typical deep water worm rod, either a medium heavy or heavy action, a 17 pound fluorocarbon, you know, with your favorite plastic on it. You can put a big finesse worm on it. You can do a 10B2 on it. Uh, you can do whatever you like, whatever you have confidence in, you know. I'd even fish that some with like a craw on it, like a fighting frog on it or either a kamikaze craw and just kind of compacted it but yet still fished it heavy and deep. So that's some different ways you could do that. Okay, and then you do spinning gear on the finesse? Spinning gear on most of the finesse stuff, that's right. Light line, spinning gear, you know, medium heavy type action rod. Okay, and then one more thing, and about the colors, what would you start with on these? Well, I think it has to do with, you know, your, 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 your water that you're fishing in. I mean, if it's muddy, obviously you wanna to go to a darker color. If the water's clear, you'd wanna to go to a lighter color. I know typically here in the fall, the water clears up really clear. So we would fall back like on a watermelon red or maybe a tilapia magic type color or something that's green pumpkin based or something that's watermelon red type based in that clear, clear water. And that's kind of how, you know, how I would approach it now. You know, I know there's some lakes that tend to be more stained at times. 
So, and I'll tell you another thing you can actually use on these that's kind of neat. I have a good buddy that uses a trick stick on these on these same jig heads and does real well with it. So you you can do a lot of different things for sure. Okay, Hayden Kelly wants to know, where can I buy these? All right, you can buy all these online from bigbitebaits.com. Uh, another good place to buy our product, if you haven't checked them out, is Tackle Warehouse. Uh, they have our product as well, the full line. So that would be two places I would recommend right away to go check for sure. Okay, that's all I have for you right now. All right, sounds good. Well, we enjoyed it, and we'll look forward to talking with everyone next week here at Big Bite Baits. Until then, y'all have a good week.